Section 16.8, Relationship Between Case of A and Case of B. Most of the time when you get this far into this book, it makes you feel like that you're being taught in Japanese and that you have no idea what you're talking about. I really think that this is simple if you look at it. It makes me scared too because it's just stuff you've never seen before. But K sub A and K sub B are just equilibrium constants. But they're the backwards equilibrium constant. They're, if you look at K sub A, you're talking about an acid. Water is pulling a hydrogen off of an acid. And you're making hydronium out of it. Okay, so look at the top line. You've got ammonium, which has a hydrogen to give. Water is snatching it. Water now becomes hydronium. And then you're left over with whatever the hydrogen ion came off of, which is your ammonia. So your case of A is just the equilibrium constant of that acid. So look at the bottom. Case of A is the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of ammonia over the concentration of ammonium. Remember, the water doesn't play because it's liquid. Look at the second line. Case of B is simply the base constant of the conjugate base of the first line. So the conjugate base of the first, here's the acid. What's left over after you give a H plus away? The conjugate base is the ammonia. So now if I do, a, if I do the backwards, if I do the, this is the backwards of this one. If I do ammonia plus water, and water is now uh, acting as the acid, it's ripping off one of the hydrogens, joining to here, it becomes the conjugate acid, now I'm left over with hydroxide. The case of B is just the, is just the equilibrium constant for this, this one, this one, divided by this one, okay? But what you're going to see is that they're backwards of each other. If I were to add these two together, these guys are all going to cancel, and the only thing I'm going to have left is water. I'm going to have water breaks apart into a proton, which joins with another water molecule to make hydro hydronium, and then the hydroxide. So they just break apart. So K sub W is what's left when you add K sub A and K sub B together. K sub A and K sub B are the components of K sub W. Well, you know K sub W because you memorize it. It's 1 times 10 to the negative 14. That means whatever K sub A is times K sub B has to equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Always. And because that's an always, that's kind of cool. That's easy. I can remember that. If it's something as always, you're going to multiply your, your acid dissociation constant times your base dissociation constant. As long as it's the conjugate base, it's an acid-base pair. It can't just be any acid or any base. But if they're the backwards of each other, then they're going to add up to be water. That means if you've got one you can get the other. What if you have acid and you want base? You take 1 times 10 to the negative 14, divide by K sub A, and you've got B base. What if you want base but have acid? Take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, divide by acid, and you'll end up with base. So K sub A times K sub B equals K sub W. And you simply find what you don't have by dividing what you do have into the into the case of W. 1.1 or 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by case of B. Or if you're trying to find case of A, or kind of trying to find case of B, take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, divide by case of A, and you'll end up with case of B. Now, if you're ever given the wacky piece of K, P case of A, remember P is just the negative log of something. As long as it's a negative log of everything, Instead of to the negative 14, it's just going to be 14. So you're going to have something plus something equals 14. Okay, so 14 minus 8. Well, whatever, if, if 8 is your case of B, what's going to be your case of A? 14 minus 8. So P sub K, P's, that's just negative logs. It's just the math involved is, is simpler than what it looks like. That's why it's fatiguing. But just please keep going. Please keep going. Please try to understand.